Hi, my name is Michael Lieber, and I want to talk to you about ABI Synth scripts. First thing I want to go into is what they are and why I use them, and then who first came up with them, when they first started being used, and where it was first announced. Now, essentially, ABI Synth is a post processing tool that allows you to improve the visual quality of certain images. And you can see here the original 8 millimeter uh, looks a little bit older. It has some issues in it. And that when it's recreated over here with ABI Synth, it looks a lot cleaner. The colors are a lot warmer. And in the end, it's just a much better looking product. Now, in terms of the person who came up with them, his name is Ben Rudiak Gould. And he went to UC Berkeley and got his degree in physics. And then he first released this in 2000. And currently, he teaches as a TA at um, Computer Science Courses at Berkeley. And this is actually the original announcement letter. And there are some amusing things in here. But most specifically, it's kind of funny that the original program is only 72 kilobytes, which is essentially 1 500th the size of any other program that's similar to it. Now. I know I'm missing something here. We've got who, what, when, where, why. Ah, I know. How. Now, essentially what I want to do is go into some of the visual issues that I use this tool to solve. And everything you're going to see here is something that I've done in the past when I was working on something. And first thing here, you can see something here might look a little bit off. You can see these lines moving across the screen here. And it might make you blink a little bit. And that's specifically because of interlacing. And whenever you rip um, a movie or whenever you rip something from a disc, it deinterlaces the footage. And what you have to do is go in here and restore the progressive frames. And this is most specifically where you can see it. You can see the transition here with the cape, and it really doesn't look all that great. So I have to use certain filters to restore those frames and make it look more like it looks whenever you're actually watching it. And this is an example of an ABI Sense script. And here, you can see the first line is the source, and you can see my external hard drive. And then there's a couple other filters here I'm not going to have time to get to. These two down here specifically are sharpening filters, so I just wanted to mention them briefly. And so these first two lines here, TFM and T-decimate, these are what's restoring the progressive frames. And TFM might look a little bit complicated here. Um, but these are actually default values. They just have to be input so that it actually works. But I don't actually really have to adjust that to make it work, although you can if you're doing something a little more complicated. And in the end, the image ends up looking a lot cleaner, and it doesn't have any of those lines or the transition that was there previously. Another couple of examples here. You can see the cape here, the lines as well. And then the final product, it's a single frame. Looks a lot cleaner. And the final one here, this one even more specifically, you can see the lines running across the whole image here. And then in the green circle here, it's very obviously looks terrible. And then here, everything looks a lot cleaner. The green circle has a lot more detail to it. And in the end, it ends up being a much cleaner image. And it doesn't look nearly as jarring when you're watching it in motion. Now, next thing I want to go into is with 4.3 and 16 by 9 footage, or more specifically, full screen and widescreen. Now, I'm sure you guys remember before Blu-ray and DVD, you would go buy a movie, and it would be full screen or it would be widescreen. And I'm sure as well, most of you know that that was because of the aspect ratio. And something that I wanted to do in one of my videos was combine the two sources together. And you can see, however, that it looks a little jarring whenever it cuts, and it's really noticeable with those black lines on the side. So the way that I would try to fix that is with these two lines here, line 36 resize and the cropping line. And essentially what it does is it takes that full screen uh, closed image and makes it and resizes it so that it fits in a widescreen environment. And then it crops the top and bottom a bit so that it actually fits. So in the end, everything looks a lot cleaner. There's not that jarring bars on the left and right side and it makes it look a lot better overall. Now, I want to go into something a little more complicated. These two issues are obviously very noticeable whenever you're working with them. Some of them you have to look a little closer for, though. And this one might be a little hard to see. I'm not quite sure on the projector. But there's actually these lines running up and down here on the image. And what that's called is dot crawl. 
And I'll run it again just in case because it's a little hard to see on that projector screen. It looks a little weird matter where I rerun it, but um, essentially it's this little issue that looks, it's on the sides of the image. I actually moved it over so you could see it more specifically. And now my Prezi is crashing. So we are going to quickly run it again. That should not have happened. I ran this thing like 20 times and it did not crash once. Okay, so the way that I try to fix that filter, that issue is with this checkmate filter here. And it essentially tries to remove the dots on the left and right side of the screen. Um, again, I moved everything over so you can only see it in the middle here. But in the finished product, uh, it ends up, you almost can't even see it anymore at all. And it's still a little bit there, but in the end, it's a much cleaner product. Now, next thing I want to go into is you might think, okay, some of this is a little bit complicated. I don't want to look for all these issues. And I just want to apply all these filters and see what happens. And okay, sometimes that can work depending on the source and depending on how degraded it is, but sometimes it's just gonna make everything look awful. And you can see here very clearly on the thumb here, there's a blue discoloration, and on the hair here, there's a yellow discoloration. And it, frankly, the pixelation everywhere, it just looks terrible. So when you apply correct filters, the overall image looks a lot cleaner. There's none of that discoloration here, again, the thumb and the hair, and overall, it's much better. Now, this is an example of the script as well. Um, you can see I took out uh, some of those other filters that were there before, and in the end, this is what I end up having to work with. And I want to mention specifically here that the placement of some of these matter too. Specifically, the TFM and T decimate I mentioned earlier has to be before a bunch of the other filters. Otherwise, it can just make the image even worse or just not change anything at all. Now, next thing I want to go into specifically is Blu-ray footage because you might think, Okay, Blu-ray footage, it's a lot cleaner. You're not going to have to deal with these issues. Um, and it looks okay, but unfortunately, specifically right here, you can see that the sky looks pretty terrible. Um, there's some huge amounts of grain here on the right side. And then on the left side, this is a little bit harder to see, but there's some oval bands running along the edge here. And that's called banding, and then obviously film grain for the other one. And there's a couple other filters in here that I'm using. Um, first of all, I have to run a different plugin for Blu-ray footage, so that's this load plugin here. But then these two specifically, the first one is actually one my friend wrote because filters are like programs and you can write them out. And I haven't had the chance to do it myself yet. But And the second one here is a default filter that comes with the program and that removes the banding. And in the end, while it can improve the footage slightly, with this example specifically, it really didn't make that big of a difference. You can still see the pixelation throughout. And so this was something I was working on last week, and I just couldn't even use it. Um, and so in the end, this is just an example of bad footage that I couldn't really work with. Um, now, for the last thing I want to show you guys, there is an uh, example of something that I did a little while back, uh, something you might be a little familiar with. And I want to show you how clean something can look when you filter things correctly. You can see here the sky doesn't have nearly as much pixelation throughout. and all the colors really play off really well. And that is an excerpt from a video I did a few months back. And that is my presentation.